Once you start, it doesn't mean that you have to always be on it. But then on the flip side, why would you go off? Follow on question of that. What if you are done having kids, let's say, and you're just wanting to feel good and, you know, kind of regain some of that 23 year old vigor? What risks are to that individual? I would say the there is no inherent risk that I could think of. An individual would want to make sure that their hematocrit, hemoglobin hematocrit is not too high. Maybe they have sleep apnea, so you'd want to check that prior. Or if someone had active prostate cancer, then you'd obviously want to see someone just to, again, find out the details. But from my perspective in the literature, there is no risk for replacing low testosterone. Wow. Which is which is crazy because, you know, one of the things that you had said to me said, okay, Gabrielle, we're going to sit down. We're going to do this episode. I want you to convince me to go on TRT. <laughs> and I that thought to myself, <laughs> okay, well, how can I convince you? If your levels are good, do you need more testosterone? And the answer, I would say no. If your free testosterone is where, um, let's say it's in an ideal range and you're feeling great, more isn't better. Would you feel great? Probably. If you went on testosterone, probably. But would there be a medical indication? No. Would there be dangers for an individual with low testosterone going on testosterone? No. And that has been one of the biggest misconceptions because we have millions of men. I was looking at the, the data. Let's say 40%, 20, 25 to 40% of men in their 40s have low testosterone. Roughly a very small percentage would ever look to get treated. 